And let's take a look at shares of Luminar Technology up here about 2%. The company uh, out yesterday announcing its new Blade concept for uh, its integrated autonomous driving vehicle and technology associated with that. Joining us now to discuss and try to put in plain English uh, just what Luminar is working on these days. Austin Russell joins us once again, CEO and founder of the company. So Austin, um, I guess let's just start, you know, kind of walking us through what you guys announced yesterday and how much closer it brings you to, to having, you know, a lot more of your technology in, in commercialized fleets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And can, can definitely dive into that. And, and by the way, you know, with all, with all the hubbub you're talking about with Coke, I mean, I basically drink it like agua anyway. So, you know, my, my, might as well just uh, <laughs> be their ambassador while we're at it. Um, no, but uh, but yeah, in, ter in terms of the uh, the event and everything we got we got going on, um, we yesterday uh, actually announced a, a few different things. Uh, first was a the first fully integrated uh, iris, you know, our uh, LIDAR and a sensing system and platform um, into a into a vehicle and a consumer car that we were able to actually then uh, take around as part of the second thing that we were doing was uh, the first opportunity for live drives with the public um, of really seeing Iris and uh, expanding beyond just the core launch partners that we have for Iris to be able to show kick off a global customer roadshow with this. And then uh, number three is showing off uh, not just what we have today, but also a glimpse into the future of how we can see um, autonomous vehicles beyond just consumer vehicles, but also with robo taxis and with trucks evolving into the future. And we're able to show um, some, some a cool vision for what that could look like. And uh, really, we, we've expanded a lot beyond just a, a lidar company, so to say. We've we've taken and solidified our leadership position there. Uh, but actually, yeah, in the graphic that you're showing, you can see the. Uh, Luminar uh, LiDAR to integrate it into the roof line of the concept vehicle uh, to be able to show a blade-like halo around the top of the vehicle. Uh, it gets you full 360 degree field of view. Um, this is what happens when you can design a car from the ground up with Luminar integrated. And we hope to have this as inspiration for the next generation of vehicles that automakers will be producing over the course of the next decade. Because, you know, I mean, if, if for people to produce the next generation vehicle platforms um, that come out, you know, five or even 10 years later, I mean, that's where the work starts today. Um, of course, uh, we, we have a lot of stuff going on today that's the here and now. Uh, we've been, we're really the first company that, that had autonomous systems designed into production vehicles and the first opportunity to really get out there uh, to enable this capability into the broader world um, from both a safety standpoint and an autonomy standpoint. So Austin, you were in New York City this week testing this stuff out. I saw a photo of you in the back seat of a car. That car you were in, does that did that drive by itself? And if it didn't, when might a car like that drive itself around uh, without a driver in the mean streets in New York City? Yep, yep. So, uh, so yes, we did, we, did, we did the event live uh, from New York yesterday here, um, as, as, as you can see. Um, when it comes down to it, the, for the, the, what we were showing off was the LiDAR data in terms of what, what we could see in the environment around it and how the car sees and understands the world. Um, this is with our series production LiDAR. Um, ultimately, we work with the automakers themselves uh, in developing the holistic software stack uh, you know, that, that powers the autonomous systems there and are providing a number of those systems. Um, so, so it requires an end-to-end -end solution with the automaker. Um, the timelines that they're planning for uh, for these deployments are uh, in, in, anywhere from you know, towards the generally towards the end of 2022 through 2025 is kind of the sweet spot of a lot of the, of where a lot of the different automakers are working with us. And, and this is for a couple of different key functionalities. One is for to and substantially enhance the safety profile of the vehicle by enabling much better active safety features is what we're calling proactive safety, like much better automatic emergency braking, automatic emergency steering, uh, stuff that will basically prevent you from colliding into things in front of you, which is actually surprisingly, these systems are not very effective today. Um, and that's why there's a direct opportunity to improve that. Additionally, for autonomy, um, there's a direct opportunity to implement, start implementing this on highways right off the bat. So basically, you know, you can manually drive over to the freeway, uh, then take your hands off, eyes off, read a book, use your phone, work on your laptop, watch a movie, take a nap, you know, whatever it may be. And then a few minutes before the final exit, do a planned manual takeover and drive to the final destination. Those are the functionalities that are being planned out in that time frame. And that, that's really where, you know, we would expect to be um, likely the first autonomous deployments out on the road and uh, much less at, at scale as well uh, with these automakers. So it's, it's what makes all the difference. Obviously, this is really exciting stuff, Austin, um, that we have been talking to you about as you've been on this journey. I, I want to ask you, there's a lot of excitement about autonomous 
and EV tech in general, just car tech, let's call it broadly. And of course, there have been a lot of entrants into the market, you being one of, um, I'd say, more than a handful over the past six months or so. We've already seen that some of them were maybe not all they were cracked up to be. And so I wonder, as you look at the industry broadly, what do you think is going to separate the ones that are going to go to production, that are going to be a more successful in the long run from those that don't seem to be on as solid footing, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think um, I think it's really important to also separate out the kind of things that we're doing than, let's say, the EV landscape, you know, uh, for, for, for sake of clarity. We're, um, we're not we're not trying to build cars here, which, which is really good. Building cars is really, really hard, um, you know, and then kind of its own game altogether. Um, you know, what, what we've been able to build is the fundamental enabling technology for autonomous vehicles and then work with all of the automakers in the broader landscape to be able to see this through. And that's how you can see by far the greatest economic opportunity where we can directly address this multi-trillion dollar existing production uh, consumer vehicle industry, uh, as well as the trucking industry for that matter, and ultimately robo taxis. So with that, um, you know, that, that, that's where uh, we were very clear from the beginning about, you know, the, the milestones, the progress and everything that, in terms of what, what we've laid out. And uh, uh, because the thing is, is that execution is everything when it comes to these things. You know, e even if you have the best technology, even if you have all that stuff, being able to, you know, meet the, the, the milestones you have for the program, being able to actually get designed into these vehicles, uh, it makes all the difference. So um, with that, um, we, we've continued to be able to execute and do so. We actually laid out at the beginning of the year five key milestones for the business between for, for as it relates to product, uh, commercial milestones, financial milestones. We've actually been meeting or beating all of those that we originally set out to do. Um, you know, it's 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 obviously um, the, you know there's there's a, there's a diversity of companies. Um, some some will uh, you know uh, some will overpromise and underdeliver. Some will underpromise and overdeliver. And uh, we want to be try as much as possible in that latter camp. Austin, you have called yourself the chief autonomous industry skeptic. Why do you call yourself that? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So, so, so a couple of things. I, you know, I think uh, when 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 it comes down to that, it's really important to stay grounded in the autonomous vehicle world and everything. You know, you could say just a handful of years ago. Um, there were a number of companies that are out there saying, hey, you know, we're going to have a, these huge urban robo taxi deployments. They're going to be, you know, picking you up and dropping you off in a city near you by 2021. Um, obviously, that, that, that didn't happen. Um, you know, and, and that's where I think some folks became a little bit disillusioned when it comes to, OK, well, what does autonomy really mean? Like, when is it going to happen? Clearly, there's this multi-trillion dollar you know, promise of, 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 an, of, of, for disruption of this industry. Um, but, but how does it materialize? So that value has to change, but what is important is to take a realistic view about the product that you're developing, the timeline that can be deployed and what all of that actually means. And with that, we took a very focused approach. Like you take a look at what, what do you think of when you talk about an autonomous vehicle company today? You know, it's, it's usually like Waymo, Cruise, Zooks, Argo, Aurora, Emotional, like, like these guys. And uh, they're effectively all focused on urban robo taxis. You know, so uh, basically a ride sharing Uber like use case of picking a passenger up from point A to point B in a city environment. Um, that's a that's a that's a great problem to solve. It's actually an incredibly difficult problem to solve, though. And at the same time, you know, part of the Luminar Studio Day was also to show, hey, you know, right now the existing systems, there's these giant roof racks full of sensing systems, the kind of monstrosities, you know, out there. How do you actually have something? that's going to make its way into a production vehicle, into a consumer vehicle. That's always been the holy grail of the industry. People thought that, that was going to be last, but actually it came around to be first. But I've always had a view of, 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 of skeptical view of, you know, we have to be realistic about the timelines, about what's going to materialize when. And then as a result, we've been able to actually use that to our advantage um, to be able to get designed into the consumer vehicle market, to get designed into an existing market. And that's how, you know, we're, we're getting to these in the first deployments and at greater scale than anyone else has really, has really seen. So, um, and, and with that, with the studio day, we were able to show off. It doesn't have to be a hundred thousand dollar roof rack full of sensing systems on your roof. It can be something that's cleanly integrated into the roof line of the vehicle. Um, we, we actually had a, um, you know, a Toyota RAV4, um, they were able to show off the integration of, um, in terms of what, what, what it can look like and what the new look of an autonomous vehicle is, as well as giving a glimpse into the future of what, of what times can look like in the future. Well, Austin, as, uh, as you know, as well as anybody, uh, Apple wasn't the first company to put all that stuff in one package, but they put it in the nicest looking package. And that is why it worked out for them. Certainly uh, it does feel like autonomous will, will kind of follow that path. Uh, Austin, we're going to yeah. full breakdown on what the rest of your diet 
looks like in addition to Coca-Cola next time. We'll see. <laughs> so we'll see the time. Uh, this morning, Austin Russell, founder, CEO of Luminar yep. Technologies. Uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you.